Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Antoine F. Gertschel. I'm attorney at law in Zurich, Switzerland. And my main focus is the animal in the law that I'm working in the field for the last 30 years. I'm the president of the Global Animal Law Gal Association. And together with my friends, we produced several great projects. And one of the projects I'm honored to present to you is the Global Animal Law Gal Friendly Index. Why do we need such a global animal law friendly index and why are we looking forward to such a big work? We do it because together with our friends in the team we found out that there is no comparison about the animal status in one state compared to the other states. There is a lot of campaigning but there is not a scientific status quo as far as the animal is concerned. So if we want to make step forwards for the animal on the national level and also on the United Nations level, we need exactly to know what happens in which country and why, and then we can make steps ahead. For that purpose, uh, in order to reduce suffering and to promote animals' well-being and dignity worldwide, we produce this Global Animal Law Friendly Index. If we look now on the status quo on our database of uh, globalanimallaw.org, we, we made this comparison, I think it's worldwide unique, that we collected together with uh, Dr. Sabine Brels all uh, the animal related, led, the animal welfare legislation uh, worldwide and the, we put it on our website that you will find easily. If we compare these only animal welfare legislations, we see that we can find several categories of the states. So the green states, for example, are those who just have basic animal cruelty bans. So it's not allowed to be cruel to animals. And if we go up, then we have animals that are protected by the constitution. We have states that do foresee um, that the animal is not longer an object, but is a third category between humans and uh, things. We have um, states that, for example, like in Switzerland, do protect the dignity of the animal and the intrinsic value. And um, by that, we made a big, nice colored picture on our website and here um, to see that some states in red are, as far as animal friendliness, more uh, modern than other states, but it's only a small piece of the discussion. What has been astonishing for us is these, let's say, 40 or 60 shades of grey. A lot of um, nations that are still in grey, meaning they have nothing. They do not prohibit animal cruelty, for example. They do not, uh, maybe they are just trying to realize OIE, minimal standards, but it's not controlled and nothing. So these grays should be filled in other, other colors, maybe in long term in red or at least in blue, with the help of the Global Animal Gal Friendly Index. Many of the countries have just minimal standards and just a um, ban of animal cruelty and we have to realize that, for example, China is now starting to think about uh, getting animal cruelty banned. This is a discussion we had in uh, Northern Europe about uh, 200 years ago, but for them it's a big step ahead. We have in 180 countries OIE standard of the World Animal Health organization. It's great that these exist, but of course for advanced countries it's just a minimal standard and not really important. And for those countries that do not even have any welfare uh, protection law, it's a step ahead. But these OIE standards are not legally binding. What lacks is a coordinated process that these states know which next step should be taken and the Global Animal Law Gal Association together with other friends in the team and supporting other associations is very open to be helpful because for the cow it does not play a role if it's a cow in Ghana, in Tasmania or in uh, Germany. It's just a cow and the cow has the same interest of, of having a good life everywhere. We see also that these um, 
states are more and more in, interdependent with each other. So it's not only a question of uh, uh, tr transporting uh, animals from, uh, let's say, New Zealand, Australia to uh, Muslimic states, but it's also the question about um, animal experiments, for example, that are looked at more critical in Northern uh, Europe. Uh, it should be avoided that they are just uh, sent to China or to Brazil, where the animal standard is lower. We need also a global view, and this Global Animal or Gal Friendly Index helps to, s to know where these animals are well kept and treated. If you want to go to B, you have to know where A is. So just to make campaign to do uh, to say that this is, this is a bad country, we know, we have to know exactly what the status of the animal is in this particular country, and then we can make steps ahead. So it needs an exact and detailed status uh, on the animal in the law, on a scientific, so legally scientific background. What is very important at the Global Animal Law Friendly Index is not only the focus on animal protection law, but also um, on the enforcement part. We know that a law that is not enforced is not worth the paper on it. And uh, the education. So we have these three pillars principle that we want to look through on uh, the animal in the law in every country of these 100 uh, 39 countries worldwide. Based on that, we can work on proposals. What should be the next step in Australia, in Argentina, in China, in Russia, when we know what the status is, and then we can compare, hey, look, the, this state, like uh, Austria, has something like an animal welfare attorney. This can be looked at and maybe implemented or copied in Australia whatsoever. We have to know that changes of legislation need a majority in the population or a majority in the parliament that should, after all, represent the uh, opinion of the people, at least in democratic countries. By that, we have animals' interest on one part, but we have to admit and to know that the animal users' lobby in the pharmaceutical industry, in uh, um, f livestock, the pet industry, the pet uh, breeder industry, and so on uh, and so forth, they are well connected, well financed, and have their in interest in using the animals. Only to say no use is good news is, um, a, as an utopia, as a long term vision, maybe. Uh, to be discussed, but for the moment, for the next, let, let's say, five to 20 years, we have to handle that uh, we have strong users and we have to balance out the interests of the animal users against the uh, interests of animals. And we have to take the interest of the society into account. The official bodies have their own opinion, animal protectors and science, livestock science, uh, ethology, etc., has to be balanced out properly and with this view we work we will work on the global animal or gal friendly index how can we find out the status quo of the animal in a state this is a very challenging question and um, i am interested in this legal comparison and i started with that in the 1990s to realize that the structure and the questions that we approach a nation to is key. Within the last months and years, we started to create a frame from which we think is the best way to look at the animals in the law of a nation, of a national basis. We call it the Galfi Wheel, so the Global Animal Law Friendly Index wheel. Let's have a close look at this wheel. I like the colors very much. It's centered with the GAL logo, of course. But we see, first of all, these colors of this wheel. The colors mean that we have the constitutional law just around the wheel. We should never forget 
that the Constitution, is it written or, written or not written, is the basis of a nation. And uh, we should always know what the Constitution says, for example, about livestock, about animal experiments, about uh, constitutional freedoms like making money or personal freedom, so e economical freedom or so on. This is part of the Constitution, this is in red. The green part is where we look at uh, more closely when we speak of animal welfare, it's just the legislation. So what is the law on a national basis, what is the law, what is the ordinance, and what is in the detail of the law, what is written there. The blue color is for us a very important one, I wouldn't say the most important one, but a very important one. I say it's about the law enforcement. I say that because I, I think I was worldwide unique animal welfare attorney of the canton of Zurich and I represented the animals in, uh, before court against the animal users. I had about 700 cases within three years and based on that I thought that we should work on structures to make that happen, that animal have a lawyer or an official body to represent the animal's interest against the animal mistreater. So the law enforcement part, the blue one, is crucial to know does it take place or is always the interest of the farmer, of the pharmaceutical industry, of the zoos, etc., etc., transport industry, is it always number one? The orange part means the educational part. If we do not educate animal owners, if we do not educate official law enforcement bodies or even legislators or law students, it starts with the education of law students, of vet students, of philosophers. Um, then the motivation to do something in law enforcement or legislation is small. We should start also to have a close and scientific look on education on several levels, so uh, universities, high schools, but also uh, for, for people that are 15, 20 years old and younger ones, just to say, take care of animals. This is the question about the um, education thing. We have the big five, we call it the big five. Uh, it's not the big five of uh, the game parks in uh, Africa. We call it the big five when we speak about livestock, the pig, when we speak about pets, so companion animals, when we speak of lab, laboratory animals, we speak of wild animals, and we speak of sports animals. That sports animals are a little bit in between. It goes in the amusement things and so on. So we created these big five. And if we look at the Galfi wheel, we have the big five. So all kind of these animals uh, on both sides of the wheel, on the left side and on the right side. Why, has, why is the wheel so big? The wheel is so big and is uh, sliced in 32 pieces because we speak not only of animal protection law, this is easy, let's, let's say. We have these animal protection laws on the Global Animal Law GAL websites all. This is easy, but we have to consider also the animal use law. We call it animal use law. So it's about uh, where is written that we should make animal experiments. Uh, what is, well, we go into details afterwards, but the animal use law is very important. I realized that when I uh, made the research in 1987, when I wrote a book that is 700 pages thick on the collection on national status on the animal in Switzerland. Only a very small part was animal welfare law, then it went into uh, animal species law, environmental law, but then all of a sudden it went into hunting law, it went into um, pharmaceutical aspects, farm aspects, these, the uh, animals in the army and the civil court, etc., etc., meaning animal welfare law is just a small little bit of everything. And if we speak of the animal in the law, we should not forget also the animal use law, although some of the supporters of uh, the gal movement or vegan movement 
want not to speak about animal use, but it's legally spoken a fact. Several foundations of such a global animal law-friendly index are the follows. As I said, the animal protection law is only one piece of the cake, and the cake is very big. Um, the animal-related law describes the animal users law of the big five. And if we want to reduce the suffering, or if we want to promote the well-being of animals, we should also try to smooth the animal use law. So if we, for example, could change the animal experiment law to promote alternative to animal testing, then maybe we save more lives than we just, uh, if we just look at these law enforcement in animal protection law. This sounds a little bit technical, but I'm sure that the lawyers, attorneys that are listening to us will understand quite easily. One key is the law enforcement and the education, and this is why we have to go, let's say, with, with these blood, sweat and tear process to really look, is it enforced, who does it enforce, what is the budget of law enforcement in, let's say, Germany, Ghana, per capita, etc. The three pillar principle is required. The GAL database is great, worldwide unique, but not sufficient because not taking uh, uh, in uh, several aspects like law enforcement, education and animal use law into regard. Why do we have chosen this wheel? Because it gives us the possibility to have 32 slices, 16 slices animal welfare law, 16 slices animal use law. We can cut these slices into the big five, as we said, and by that, if I counted well, but I did it more than once, uh, we have 512 little fields. And these little fields have to be filled with the questions if you ask a tarot, if you ask I Ching, an oracle, the most important thing is a question. So we will establish a system of questions that the answer will be objective and comparable. With the Global Animal Law Gal Friendly Index, we raise the relevant questions to the animal in the law and uh, in legislation, in enforcement, and in education in every state worldwide. We will collect the questions, be it with our team, that are about 70 law professors and attorneys specialized in the field, with official bodies, maybe with main um, law firms worldwide, to get objective and truly and justified um, answers about our questions, and then we will weigh them and give them points to know uh, it's a little bit like the European Song Contest that we can say Romania 20 points and Spain 4 points. We, we can balance out how animal friendly this structure is in this state. What is the goal of that? It's not about just giving work to attorneys that do not know what to do else. It's about the vision of one objective and reliable global database on the animal in the national law. When I speak to specialists in the field, they say such a database is missing at WHO, at OIE, uh, in the EU, because nobody went through this process. And this process reminds me of the saying that uh, maybe it's a genius thing, but for a genius you need 99% of perspiration and 1% of inspiration. And we say for the reduction of the suffering and the promoting of the well-being of animals, we have to go through this project that also takes animals' interests, but also the interests of the society and of the industry into account. Some thoughts about the Gelfi. We take care of the big five, 
of the lab animals, pets, livestock, wild and sport animals. We do focus on animal welfare or protection law and on animal use law on the other side. We have these 16 circles with specific questions on constitutional law, on the legislation, on enforcement and on education. And we can ask then, when we click, when you have the answers on it, when we click on the field, we will easily get, for example, the answer on the question um, I've been asked by a US uh, radio station, what is about the boiling of lobsters? We, it's a ban in Switzerland. Is there another country where it's not allowed to boil lobsters? We found out, yes, in New Zealand, but it's not enforced. So with one click, we could have then the information for all the media and all the animal uses and animal uh, protectors. The animal friendliness can be measured state by state by counting these um, answers and by weighing the quality of the measure taken in this or another country. By that, we can say if one nation takes care of, let's say, a banning fur, it might be a uh, motivation for the other state also to ban fur. If we have these, uh, this Gelfi wheel completed, we can work with the national bodies, with animal welfare organizations, even in the industry to say, look, this nation has solved the problem like this. Why do you not take it over? What sounds maybe a little bit complicated means the Gelfi is needed to reduce animal suffering worldwide, to promote animal welfare and the animal dignity worldwide. And it needs, of course, funding on the national level and open doors everywhere to do so. But we from the GAL team are convinced that this uh, GAL fee wheel, the Global Animal Law Friendly Index, is key for taking major steps nation by nation. We are based in Zurich, Switzerland. And this reminds us of the big, great elder statesman, Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill, in September 1946, in the aula, uh, in, the, uh, in the auditorium of Zurich University, where I started to study law, he said, therefore, I say to you, let Europe arise. Based on that, without taking the discussion on Europe uh, into regard so much, he had a vision and we share this vision to say, therefore, I say to you, let animals arise with all our project of the Global Animal Law Gal Association. Thank you very much for your attention.